Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I am here with this season's PC car, the Roush Stage 3 Mustang. So, we got another Mustang. Uh, that means more Ford Fusions being used. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this is a Tier 5 car. And this follows another Tier 5 car from before and one more Tier 5 car to come. That means these three seasons, if you're getting the PC car and building them, you're going to be spending quite a lot of money. So make sure you do your uh, necessary grind and get that money saved up because six plus million per car will add up rather quickly. All right, let's take a look at this car stage six effects. And knowing nowadays everything involves sprints and speed traps, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let's start off taking a look at this car without fusions because I wanted to do a quick comparison of where fusions would come into play when it comes to the PC car as well. So I'm gonna show you without fusions, then I'm gonna show you with fusions, and you can really start to understand why fusions are so important. With the help of the Mysterious Stranger account, we're gonna look at a uh, Roush Mustang without fusions first. Now this is fully staged to stage six. So you're talking about a car that's been built fully to stage six, but it has no fusions installed at this point. So what we have here is a car with 42 out of 42 upgrades and zero fusions. If you notice, when you tune this, and even if you tune it to the best you can, you're really talking about only 100 and something EVO. And that's exactly the issue here without fusions. Without fusions, you really don't have any tuning margins. I, even if you do, it's very, very small. So here, with this tune, which is the best I can come up with EVO-wise, you're talking about a 11.497 car. What you can also tell so far is that it has a decent mile per hour, even without fusion. So this is probably a high mile per hour car in the end. It has okay acceleration, and this is at a pretty aggressive final gear already. But again, without fusions, none of this matters a whole lot because it doesn't really give you the whole picture. So when you're tuning your car and you're missing a ton of fusions, this is the thing that won't get high. The EVO points won't get super high. And therefore, your margin of tuning is very small. And that is why you could be very stuck, even though you say, look, I got all these stage sixes. I'm just missing epic fusions. How come I can't get anywhere? That's why, because in the end, you need both. The stage sixes are nice to have, but they really don't give very much unless you also have the fusions to help out with the EVO tuning. All right, so that's without any fusions. Let's start like taking a look at the car with stage five with fusions, and then we'll start talking about tuning um, stage six effects and other things from there. Okay, we are now back with stage five full fusion. So you're now looking at stage five with full fusion. Now I left this out for a reason. I'm gonna explain that when I do the stage six effects. But here you have full stage five, full fusion. Look at the EVO difference and also the tuning difference. One, now the car has more power because of the fusions. The nitrous duration is different. And we can finally lower the final drive from this point to here and still make max EVO, which means you're gonna have a higher top speed, you accelerate a little bit quicker, and you're gonna need more grip. Now, let's look at a dyno. 10.046, you're a full second faster than no fusion with full stage six. So the fusions only up to stage five already shaved a second off of the time. And that's where fusions are almost as important as the stage sixes. If you can't get one, you definitely want the other. If you're missing both, that's where you're gonna be stuck. Notice the mile per hour now in the quarter is up to where the mile per hour was in the half without fusions and full stage six. So the car is much faster. However, looking at this dyno quickly, what I can tell you right now is this car will do easy speed traps, but the sprints are gonna be a little tougher for it. Of course, that depends on where the sprints are set. If they're in the 2.6, 2.8, 3.2 second range, no problem. But if natural motion for the PC car puts some of these near 2.0 range, that might be a problem. But still, 
This is a car that does good top speed and doesn't seem to do as well on acceleration. That means it's a tire spinner in the first few gears and most likely to get the best time out of it. We may want to use nitrous somewhere in the third or fourth gear depending on where we fall. I'm not going to run the car yet. Let's start taking a look at the stage six effects, but I'm going to jump to engine first and show you the difference between a stage six with fusion and a stage six without fusion. And then we're going to look at that same thing with tire because tires fusions give a lot of evil points. So that may have a more uh, noticeable effect of differences. So we're going to look at that as well. So let's first take a look at stage six effects starting with engine. Okay, so we're going to look at engine first. I'm going to install the stage six without any fusions. And let's take a look at the effect first, and then we're going to come back, add the fusions, and look at the effect then. So this will give us a perspective on a stage six with and without fusions. So again, anytime you add a stage six, you need to first play with the tuning a little bit. You don't have to go dramatic. Just tweak it, see if it has any real change, and then just kind of move towards the direction where you see the EVO points going up. So this definitely is beating the 1400 and something before but remember we were at 10.0s already so this is probably not a major change from there because the evil points really isn't any higher than before even though this went up a little bit now from a grip standpoint it looks like lowering grip won't help so here we have a 1405 evil 701 PP point and 9.908. So it dropped from a 10.0 to a 9.0. That's about a tenth. Mile per hour didn't really change. Zero to 60 improved by very margin. I mean, this is, you know, marginal. It doesn't even make much of a difference. But the time did drop. Now, let's go back and add the fusion. So let's take a look at this stage six again. Okay, now we're going to look at this stage six again real quick. But this time it's full fusion. I already added it in. We're going to go back to tuning. Notice the tuning says you can now retune once again because the EVO has now changed. We gained about 30 EVO already, plus probably can get more from tweaking the final drive because that extra push will allow the car to go a little higher in the top end and potentially increase our performance even more. So. Without spending a whole lot of time messing around with it, I think we're pretty close to max EVO here, maybe one or two points off at most. So I'm just going to go ahead and dyno it and show you where it's at. Remember, we were at 9.0, uh, 9.9, and the EVOs from the few fusions pushed it to 9.834, almost another tenth. Not quite, uh, more like 700s, but 700s is still a decent drop from just the few fusions. Mind you, these fusions are not very dramatic in EVO gains. That's why I left the tire ones off as well. We're going to look at that one. That one gives you something like 1020 EVO per fusion. And that can show a much more dr dramatic drop. And we'll go, we're going to look at that in a minute. Let's go ahead and look at the next stage six. Next one on the list is turbo. With turbo installed, let's go back. Now, notice it says I don't need tuning. That doesn't mean you don't try to tune it. Sometimes, even though the computer is telling you it doesn't do anything, you can still eke out a few points by just tweaking final drive here and there. Although, in this case, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, wow, nothing, no movement. Oh, and it moved down, okay. But, by notice it had a few points margin here, and that does affect your top speed here. Uh, with turbo install, top speed's pretty good, even in the quarter. And again, the 0 to 60 improved, but the 0 to 100 didn't really change much. So from a time standpoint, even with Fusion Turbo, it's a lot slower than engine. Uh, engine. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It's about similar to engine, but a little bit slower than engine. Uh, 9.887 from a 10.0. Not dramatic, but right behind engine right now, which is uh, 9.83s, with the fusions in. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, we're here now with the next one, which is intake, uh, fusions installed. Let's go look at the tuning. 
probably going to be very little effect from tweaking the tune here. Uh, again, the computer is saying you don't really need to do anything. It's not going to get better. And it looks like the computer might be right. So Dyno, 9.909. Again, slower than turbo. So right now we're going engine, turbo, intake in that order. Hardly surprising. Typical of tier 5 cars in many cases. Um, I was hoping for some kind of surprise here, but so far no surprises. Let's go and look at the next one. All right, so here we're at Nitrous. Nitrous is installed full fusion, stage six. Nitrous will definitely require tuning because it changes the entire duration of the nitrous and the power level. So we'll play with that a little bit. I have a feeling, of course, having it minimized may not be the optimal. It's probably good around six. Uh, it's probably where it's gonna wanna be. Yeah, looks like right around six something will give you the max EVO. So right around there, but because you have more power, you probably can push further in the top speed as well. So a little bit of tweaking on the final drive. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, it's still kind of right where it was before. So this car tend to want to be near that final drive um, stock location. 3.15 is pretty aggressive. So it tops out pretty early at the end, even though it does have a decent top speed. And right now, quarter mile speed, 257. Uh, so it'll get to a pretty high speed in the quarter mile. So probably no issues with this car uh, for most of the speed traps. Uh, again, 0 to 60, 0 to 100 doesn't improve much. That's going to be the key. The sprints are going to be more of a headache, I think, than anything to do with the speed traps. All right. So that's a 7 to 1485. Um, Dino again, 9.722 certainly beats the other three. That's not really surprising. This is nitrous after all. Uh, let's see if body, trans, and tire will outperform it in some way. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, back here now with body. Body installed with full fusion. Let's go and look at the effects. So I can tell already without tuning, the EVO is a little bit lower. The performance points a little bit higher, but then again, your nitrous is way off again. So once you tweak it back to, say, 5.2, where we had it in a more optimal position, and then play a little bit with this. Now, with lighter uh, body, generally with body stage 6, your top speed actually could suffer a little bit. Uh, so final drive tend to go more aggressive to get the EVO points to go up. Um, and that also usually means it hurts your speed trap but slightly, probably not much, uh, depending on how much performance it adds overall, which actually looks pretty good here, your speed trap really doesn't get hurt. And here the time is even better. So you're talking 9.66. This is definitely the top stage six at this point uh, with body. So body, nitrous, engine turbo intake at this moment. Let's keep going and see what the next one will bring us. Okay, so we're up to tire. Now, I left the Fusions off a of tire for a reason. Let's take a look at tire without Fusion first, and we're going to come back, we're going to look at this. But the reason I left it out is this. When you try to add, you can see that this is like plus 19 per Fusion. If that plays out all the way with all five, that could add easily 100 EVO, or maybe at least 50, 60 EVO just from the Fusions. That's why I left it off for now. I wanted to show you a potentially more dramatic difference than what engine showed. Okay, so again, we're gonna play with the tune. Now notice this is a very low on EVO points, and that actually means this stage six without the fusions really isn't anywhere close to what nitrous would be able to do, or, or body for that matter. So what we have here is a 9.9 .9 with the stage six installed. That is worse than what? Intake, right? Intake's better than this, but then intake had two fusions in it. All right, let's go back and add the fusions. It could just be tires of weak stage six, but it could also be something else. It could be the fusions make that much of a difference in this case. So let's add the fusions and see what happens. So we're talking 17, 17, 14, 12, and 13. That just bumped it up to over 1400 from the 13.7. With that change, 
If you go back now and you retune, and we will, notice the tuning is going the other way again. Not by a whole lot, but it's there. You're not really going to lower this much. I think it's still going to hold at 0, 0100. But now the dyno, 9.827. So it just dropped from literally 9.9 .9 to 9.82. This is a little more drop than engine showed, but it gives you the same perspective. With the extra Evo, what is basically the worst stage six has now just edged out engine to get into fourth place um, from the bottom, not from the top. So, you know, so what we're, what we're looking at now is we're looking at body, nitrous, and then tire, engine, turbo intake. So it's doing pretty good. It's actually in third place in theory, but of course, I think trans is going to outperform it and put itself either in the third or top three. So let's go look at trans now. But again, the point of that exercise was to show you that those fusions made a far greater difference than the stage six itself. And that is something you need to keep in mind. Getting to stage six isn't the be all end all. The fusions are just as important. All right, coming up to the end here, we have transmission. Now, transmission, I already have the fusions in, it's installed. That is not boding well for its performance though. Probably because it needs some tuning. But is it gonna tune better than tire? This doesn't seem to be the case. I rarely see a huge jump in Evo with this car. Now, transmission's another one though, things that makes the car accelerate quicker usually, but sometimes hurts your overall top speed. Okay, so this doesn't look that great. Uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna get more Evo out of it than 1338. That means transmission's actually pretty weak. Ooh, ooh, it's terrible. That's almost as bad as having stage five only. So that kind of surprised me. I didn't expect transmission to end up at the dead bottom. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so that is that is a surprise. Transmission usually for tier five cars are pretty good. In this case, transmission does nothing for you except uh, make you frustrated. So transmission hurts everything. I mean, not not necessarily everything. Here, it's actually better for this, but it's not really good for anything else, and it certainly isn't good for the time. Um, and that's with full fusions. So boy, um, yeah, don't want this one. Well, you want them all, but if you were only going to get one, you don't want this one. All right, now, let's talk a little bit before we start going into uh, full stage six is about tuning this car for certain things like speed traps and sprints. With sprints, you can tell the transmission actually is helpful. This is probably one of the lowest zero to 100 I've seen without fine tuning it. The other thing about this car is I noticed that this car has pretty long gears and it's probably a tire spinner in some sense because it's a really slow zero to 100, which means making it aggressive like this isn't necessarily gonna help your time because you're just gonna spend your tire while you're busy shifting and wasting time and not being able to use nitrous anyway, or using nitrous will hurt you rather than help you. So this is not a sprint car that you simply put to 5.0 and then smash the buttons as quickly as possible. In fact, my theory, and I think I might be onto something here, is with a car that spends its tire that much, you're almost better off having longer gears in the first two gears and keeping it there for the purpose of getting through the zero to 100. Now, nitrous here being more aggressive could help, but only if it's helping in the end here where it's not just spending the tire doing nothing. And here, obviously lowering the tire grip isn't gonna help. You already had zero 100, You're, that's gonna stay there for the sprints. So 2.203, is what I'm looking at with the trans. Obviously with other parts installed, that'll improve, but if there's a 1.5 or 1.8, zero to 100, it's gonna be a real problem for this car. I just don't see it doing well. Now you can also test third gear. You don't always have to stick with second gear. It's always good to play with this to see where the computer comes in. But I can tell you as of right now, it looks like this is the better uh, deal. Now, 
Dyno doesn't mean that's all you're going to get. You have to test run it. So for sprints and speed traps, the dyno is a reference, not the be all end all. Again, it's a reference to start. Then you have to figure out whether you can get it by driving it a certain way. So you're going to test different driving techniques. And sometimes playing with that will get you well beyond what the dyno says the car can do. Let's do a test run and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to launch this near perfect and then hold the gear a little bit and then shift to second and nitrous. That should give us a pretty good right there 100, right? You want it to hit 100 and let's see what happens. All right, look at that. 2.198, so we outperformed the dyno on that one. So but that's very very little, right? So you're not going to get a really great 0 to 100 out of this car easily. Uh, obviously, with more stage sixes, it'll improve quite a bit, and we'll look at it again when it's fully maxed. Uh, but that is with trans only, which actually usually helps for acceleration. Okay, let's take a look at some combinations now that we know the order of things. So you know that uh, body's number one, nitrous number two, tire number three, and then it actually goes engine, turbo, intake, uh, and trans, which is surprising. But so that's your order of seven. Uh, that is going to be your stage six. Uh, in order of best to worst. All right, so now let's talk about combinations. We're, combinations, we already know, the best stage sixes will help the most with performance numbers, and the worst stage sixes probably won't even come close to two of the best or three of the best. I'm not going to go through that again. What I'm going to actually do this time is to focus on speed trap uh, versus sprints for the best and worst possible setups. So. Generally speaking, if you want more speed, speed trap speed, and you know that transmission being a pretty useless stage six to start with, and tire, which actually is a good stage six, uh, adds grip, but may or may not help, and body, which made you go more aggressive with the final drive for the Max Evo 2, those are probably not the ones that are going to help you a whole lot with speed traps. However, nitrous is almost always important for speed trap. And almost always, engine turbo intake, even though they may not be the best for giving time, they may give you good speed traps. So let's put these guys in as these four for speed trap purposes, right? We're going to look at speed trap and not worry about the time. Now, the Evo obviously jumped a lot, so it's definitely much quicker. But what can we hit in the quarter mile here? That's the key. 269 without even tuning it. So for speed trap though, the tuning is you want to put it in the gear that you know the car is still pulling. So either you're going to use this really long final gear or you're not. In the quarter mile, the key is can I hit that particular end of that gear within the quarter or do I just hit this gear in the quarter? And you only have so much you can do here, right? You can't go lower than 2.0. So you go this way first, 274. So this car, because it accelerates relatively well in these gears, don't really need to use that final gear to hit a pretty high top speed. But can we beat that if we put this to 300? Can the car now hit that in 300? Ooh, well, hey, 278. How about that? Now, it's not going to hit 300, so you can keep going down, and you may be able to hit 280. So yes, the final gear here is still useful. Even though it's a big, long gear and it drops, just by putting it here, you can still get a pretty decent speed. Now, we haven't even played with this yet, right? Usually, if you play with nitrous, you can get more. Now, in this case, it's saying 280 with minimal nitrous duration all right, let's leave that. The next thing to look at is tire. Usually by dropping some grip, you can get better top speed. Now, there is a point at which you're not going to get more because at some point you're spinning the tires too much in the beginning and the car can no longer make it to the top speed on time. So 281 is what we were looking at at about 20, uh, 80 setup, 282. And that's with the four stage sixes, nitrous engine and the others. Now, let's compare notes. Let's go back and 
try a different combination and see what happens with the speed traps. So here, I'm going to take out just the three here. I'm going to leave nitrous, right? We want to leave nitrous because that's kind of a bit of a wild card because that is almost always important for speed traps. So let's leave nitrous in, but then we try the other combos. We're going to do tire, trans, and body. If we look at this and they do better in the quarter mile, then that kind of says that engine turbo intake doesn't help that much with speed traps. The key here is these are technically the stronger stage sixes for time. Okay, but notice that the quarter mile isn't necessarily better. And that's the thing about speed traps. You sometimes having quicker acceleration uh, doesn't necessarily give you the time or the benefit to get to a higher top speed. So tire adding tire usually hurts it a little bit because it's too much grip. Here I'm adjusting this to a even lower point, but again, we're not even close to 280. So that tells you with the same nitrous ability to push the car, engine turbo intake actually does better for speed traps than having the more aggressive accelerating uh, final stage sixes. So, and that that's kind of what I was alluding to even from the beginning. When you have a stage six that you add in and immediately forces you to go this way towards a higher final drive to get the best Evo, that's not a stage six that usually helps with this. Versus any stage six that pushes the final drive this way tend to be more helpful with that. But in the reverse of things is that it tend to hurt this. Notice these stage sixes here Let's go look at, is a 2.0, uh, 0 to uh, 100. The one before was 2.017. So with more grip, we can get into the 1.8 and the 0 to 100 with body and trans, both of which are generally good for acceleration, but less so for getting a high top speed. And this will, again, invert itself when you go with the other stage sixes where you're going for top speed and not acceleration. So the balance is always, if you don't have the right stage sixes for a particular task, you may be struggling. Now, sometimes if you're missing one or two stage sixes, it won't hurt anything. In this case, for example, whatever I do, if I'm missing trends, I really don't foresee it having all that much of an effect on most things, but it certainly would affect a little bit on the uh, 0 to 100. So just to kind of recap the other setup, just to make sure we, because I didn't look at the 0 to 100 before with this setup. Let's go compare notes. We had a 1.8 0 to 100 with the second gear tune. We're going to go again with the same tune, same 2.163. Okay, so that is your balancing act between speed trap and your sprints. The right stage sixes, same deal as just making the time. Getting the right stage sixes, setting it up, sometimes will make all the difference in whether you're going to get through a particular challenge. Now, the, most of the time we're stuck because it's Evo Cup or Golden Cup. You're less likely to be stuck on PC Cup. I find the challenges to be relatively easy. But don't underestimate the effects of particular stage sixes on the way the car will react to the challenges. Now, you can tune around some of this, uh, but tuning can only get you so far without parts. So you need the fusions, you need the parts, and then you need to tune to get through. Now, you already saw that if you don't have trans tire and body, you're probably going to struggle a bit with the sprints if they're tough enough. Uh, and on the other end, if you have uh, engine, turbo, and intake, you're going to have much easier time with going through the uh, speed traps. All right, so that was the discussion of the uh, Roush Stage 3 Mustang. Here I'm going to do a final thing, which is putting it to fully maxed and try to run it. Mind you, I have not had much experience with this car, so this is not a maxed out best time video, okay? 
Uh, so my time is probably, let's just call it a max evo time video with stipulation that I'm probably running a tenth or so slower than what it could do. Okay, so I'm going to put it to the max evo tune that I can see here as being beneficial to getting the time and see what it puts us first. All right, so that's probably not going to change. I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Come on, one more point. No, doesn't want to give me that point. All right, all right. Do we get more points here or this way? No, nope, definitely this way. Ah, oh, there it is. No, lost it again. All right, ah, fifteen ninety six. I think I was able to get right. Yeah, 1596, which, let's look at the dyno. 8.609. Yeah, that's kind of meh. Okay. Uh, not the fastest thing out there. All right. Well, let's run it and see what happens. Oh, half mile. Okay. I'm probably going to shoot for third gear nitrous. Um, it might even be a fourth gear nitrous car. I'm not sure if it needs second gear nitrous, but... And that was not perfect shifts either, so bear with me. A0. Oh, oh, hey, how about that? It beats Dino a little bit. All right, just a little bit, right? 8.6, 8.58. All right, so I, I chalked that up to a decent run. I'm sure guys out there that plays with this w in more detail is going to go ahead and get some kind of 8.50 or 8.4 run out of this thing. Uh, I'm not worried about that at this moment. For the purpose of this video, 8.58 uh, is what I got. You could probably get into the 8.5s with a Foley Max car. Uh, again, realistically, unless you have a lot of bronze keys and you don't mind burning it on a mediocrely fast stage, uh, on a tier 5 car, uh, I'm probably not even going to bother to max mine on the actual account that I use for playing. So this is just a perspective on what the car can do. So... That is the stage six effect video. It's a lot of info on this one. Um, it's not particular to this car. A lot of what I discussed on the speed trap and sprints apply to every car, including the Fast and Furious challenges, where a lot of people had problems tuning uh, the Z and even the Dodge RT to try to beat certain speed traps, the RX-7. The concepts are no different. Um, tuning for speed traps tuning for sprints really comes down to part placement and then tweaking the gear ratios and the grip to try to maximize what you can. The dyno will give you a starting point but not ultimately what you can fully rely on. For example, the Z, uh, the 350Z in Fast and Furious can actually beat its speed trap, dyno speed trap by almost 10 miles per hour uh, in some cases. So. You, you want to use it as a reference, but not the be-all, end-all of everything. I hope uh, this video was helpful to you. Um, please feel free to ask me questions on the channel. Uh, you can always make comments to let me know if you have a question. I'll try to answer the best I can. And if you like the video, please leave a like. And please subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications when I put up new videos. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.